In this video, I want to show you the five step approach to getting hired after CS50. Let's get right into it. The first thing that you need to do is to get into the right mentality. You need to stop listening to people who are telling you that you cannot get hired with only having CS50 as your background. You need to stop believing that you need to know everything there is to know in computer science in order to get hired. And you also need to stop believing that you need to compete with other coders who have a ton of experience in order to get hired. Your mentality should be, I have enough knowledge in order to get hired. There are plenty of jobs out there that require very minimal coding skills in order to get your foot in the door. I'm talking about help desk. I'm talking about project management. I'm talking about solutions engineering, I'm talking about different fields, which are considered entry level jobs in the high tech industry that you can get hired for with only CS50. And in some cases, you'll notice recruiters might even be impressed with all the languages and all the skills that you have just from CS50. So that's the first step. Just you need to get in the correct mentality, the mentality of, yes, I can, I have enough. I already have enough. I have what it takes in order to get hired. The second step is that you need to have a personal website, which includes your portfolio. You need to take all the assignments from CS50, especially the final project, the project from the week before that, the financial app. And also you need to take the site that you made. I think it was during week seven when you learn HTML, JavaScript, CSS. You need to take those three and you need to put them in a portfolio, which tells the story that you have completed these projects. Now, you shouldn't just write that you completed these projects. You should tell the story that completing these projects was very challenging and that you managed to overcome those challenges and you managed to complete and deliver the projects on time anyways. This is a key point because this is actually showing people that you are valuable, that you know how to solve problems, that you you don't just sit around and wait for other people to solve your problems. You actually take initiative and you deliver. And this is what you want to tell to potential recruiters. Yeah, you're someone who's coming in to add value. Along the lines of your personal website is your CV or resume. The website really is a complement to the CV. And on your CV, you should include a link to your website. And you should probably also include a link to your GitHub because over there, People can see your activity. People can see how long you've been coding for, how many commits you have per day. It reinforces your argument that you're committed and that you show up every day to code. That already says a lot to recruiters. There are many other elements that you need in your CV. Take a look below here on the link. There's another video where I go into detail exactly what elements need to be in your CV to make it stand out and just make it fit into this whole story we're trying to tell. So once you have all your documents, you're ready to present your case to the recruiter. You're ready to tell the story that I am valuable by showing that you came well prepared to the meeting, that by showing them your projects and that you've delivered by showing them that you don't cut them off and you don't speak a lot and you're composed and you listen and you don't run your mouth and you don't talk on necessary things and that you are open-minded, that you're willing to collaborate in the team, that you're willing to take advice, that you're willing to take direction. All these things is what recruiters are looking for. When you get to an interview, by the way, it means that the recruiter is already happy with what he saw in the CV and the resume. The goal of these documents is just to get your foot in the door. You almost need to forget about whatever was written there once you get to the interview. Your job is not to push the CV and your portfolio at the interview. Your job is to show that you are a decent human being and that they should be working with you. I will leave a link at the bottom here also to a couple of videos that I have on this topic where you can see in detail some more techniques on how to really almost like manipulate your job interview to your favor. All right, so my last tip here would be that once you have sort of the ball rolling, once you've already got your documents ready, once you're already kind of interviewing maybe with, with one or two companies, maybe more, hopefully, once you are in the process, you should know that you're not gonna get hired immediately. First of all, there's a delay between the time the company wants you to come in for an interview to the time where that actually happens. I mean, you could go months sometimes without really making any progress while you're still kind of talking to companies and waiting on different things. Let me recommend to you that during this time, don't stop learning. You need to continue learning. If for the positions that you're applying to, it would be nice to have some additional knowledge to be better prepared for those jobs. Go ahead and start taking courses related to those fields. It can't hurt you. Go ahead and maybe once a week, take a look at your website again, see what you can improve. Take a look at your CV, see how you can re-edit that and make a better version. Constantly be learning new skills and constantly revise your documents in order to better reflect this better version of yourself.